What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John, coming to you from the north shore of Staten Island, and many of you equate this place with the Staten Island Shuffle. You know what I'm talking about, taking the Staten Island Ferry to get the Statue of Liberty view and heading right back to Manhattan. Well, today, I'm gonna give you some reasons to stick around. We're gonna be sharing seven things to do in Staten Island, New York's unexpected borough. And here's the best part. All of these activities are either walking or biking distance from the ferry terminal. Let's go explore. One of the top questions I get on this channel is where can you shop cheaply in New York? Come to Empire Outlets, New York City's only outlet destination. Forget taking a bus upstate or to Jersey. Take a few steps off the ferry instead. Yes, you heard it correctly. This outlet mall is just seconds away from the ferry terminal exit. It just launched in May, only 50% open so far. It's going to have five levels of shopping, food, and entertainment. Not only is this mall convenient for shopping as a tourist, but it also has plenty of Instagrammable locations if you need a break from shuffling through stores. It's got all the classics, like Old Navy, Banana Republic, and my choice of the day, Brooks Brothers. I managed to snag this sweater at 50% off, and while my modeling moves need work, I thought I didn't look half bad. Team Adriana settled on Nordstrom Rack and was far more graceful shopping as she picked a few bright sweaters. After buying some clothes, you can easily run around admiring some of the epic Manhattan skyline views. And did I mention how many quirky and fun things they have installed here? By this upcoming holiday season, there will be some eateries open. This is going to be one of New York City's top shopping destinations and still a bit under the radar. So if you want to start off that perfect day in Staten Island right, take a few steps off the ferry and take advantage of some of the top brands around. What's more New York than pizza and Pier 76, located right by the ferry terminal, is a tasty way to get a slice of what Staten Island's all about. Less than a 10 minute walk from the ferry terminal, you can almost smell that pizza when you get off the boat, and you better work yourself up an appetite. Owned by the same family as a legendary Joe and Pat's Pizzeria in Staten Island, you can keep it casual by ordering a slice or pie to go. Their chefs are on top of their game, believe me. Or enjoy your meal in the dining room like we did. They're known for their thin crust and we decided to go with a vodka pie, which was absolutely incredible. These guys are one of the best pizza joints in Staten Island for a reason, and you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not at least stopping in for a slice. If you're in the mood for a little more food, go with the Fiocchi Pear Pasta. This absolutely melted in our mouths, and we left Pier 76 with plenty of energy to explore Staten Island even more. This has got to be one of New York City's best kept secrets. At 83 acres, you could spend an entire day here. And we could spend an entire episode here, but alas, we've got even more places on Staten Island to showcase. And they call it the Borough of Parks for good reason, as they have over 10,000 acres of them on the island, and Snug Harbor is probably the most famous. Originally purposed as a retirement destination for ex-sailors, it has 26 older buildings from the 19th century, and is considered by many to be the crown jewel of Staten Island. Just just two miles from the ferry terminal, there's an endless array of activities. You could start at one of the three museums. To learn more about its sailor history, you've got to enter the Noble Maritime Collection, which is a pay-what-you-wish admission and seriously one of the best museums I'd never heard of. Step back into the past and see how the Snugs lived after their days at sea. Explore John Noble's houseboat, which is now the centerpiece of the collection. This was Team Adriana's dream come true as a fellow artist. Artist. From models of ships to portraits, the maritime theme is everywhere. I felt like a kid exploring. Head outside, of course, and you could see any of the 14 botanical gardens. If you're into photography, this is like a playground. The alley here may be one of the most Instagrammable places in New York City that few know about. 
My friend Jacob Carlson shot a vlog at the Chinese Scholars Garden a few years back, and you'll feel like you're transformed out of New York City after only a few steps inside. Snug Harbor is so massive, it even has its own farm. Your best bet may be just to wander around and get lost in some of these amazing gardens. There's few places in New York City quite like it, and if you want some nature, Sailor Snug Harbor is one of your best bets on your Staten Island adventure. Located just a five minute walk from the ferry terminal, the National Lighthouse Museum needs to be on your radar. Admission is $7, and this little gem will probably take you 30 minutes to an hour to explore. This is a one-stop shop for everything you need to know about lighthouses. See models from all over the world, including the St. Augustine, Florida Lighthouse, which is where I proposed to Adriana earlier this year. She said yes. I found this place really cool as there was so much history and neat facts to learn about. Watch a short movie or better yet, buy some unique souvenirs for your friends back home. This is another one of those hidden pearls on Staten Island. Just a hop skip from the ferry terminal. Sure, Manhattan has Broadway, but Staten Island has this little gem, and you'd be surprised at the quality of the acts they draw in. From Huey Lewis to Jerry Seinfeld, and a whole lot more, if you can catch a show here at the intimate 2800 capacity theater, that's your best bet. But the next best thing is to take a tour with Eric. This guy knows his stuff. The interior design was done by a man named Nestor Castro, who was a Spaniard, and that is why you'll see these kind of Spanish influences peppered throughout the theater. See the email in the description to arrange your own tour, but celebrating its 90th anniversary, it's interesting to note that it was originally used as a movie theater. Talk about seeing films in style. Throughout the years, it had other uses, like as a disco roller rink. And it even sat vacant for a few decades until some local Staten Islanders saved it and turned it into its current use today as a performing arts space. I don't think there's a single bad seat in the house, and as Eric mentioned, you can see the Spanish influence all around. I felt like I was transported to an opera house in Europe. It would truly be a privilege to take in any type of performance here. See their website for more details about upcoming shows. This is another gem on the island. This is a very important place to visit to pay your respects to the victims of that horrible day from Staten Island. Just a short stroll from the ferry terminal lies a beautiful memorial that you should do your best to come to. The first major memorial of that day in New York City, it's dedicated to the 275 Staten Islanders who lost their lives in that tragic event. Framed around two fiberglass structures that look like postcards, this is so respectfully done. The name, birth date, and place of work at the time of attack are present, as well as the outline of the victims' faces. There's also a touching tribute to the first responders who've died as a result of health complications after the attacks. This is the most somber stop on our day on the island, and with a perfect view of the Manhattan skyline, definitely a place for reflection about lives lost. After all this exploring, why not cap off your visit to Staten Island with a cold beer and flagship brewery is not going to disappoint. Can you ever go wrong visiting a brewery after a long day of sightseeing? They always have at least 12 beers on tap, all brewed in-house, of course. I love what they do here, like the Pizza Wrap Pilsner, which you can buy at Staten Island Yankee Minor League Games. My Rogan Fest Oktoberfest style beer went down smooth. Adriana enjoyed her Blood Orange IPA as well. And we all enjoyed the fun and plenty of games. That'll keep you busy here. 
I'd recommend this highly for a group of friends. Inquire for specific times, but on weekends, they offer tours of the brewery. Have some of their super knowledgeable staff take you through the beer making process. Inside here right now uh, is an act of fermentation and we have an ale going. So what's gonna happen inside here is a after your tour, get cozy and enjoy some cold ones. You've got a 15 minute walk back to the ferry terminal, which you most certainly earned. Everything we covered today is written down below in the description. If you want to turn this into an entire day trip, feel free and make sure to check out our other New York City playlists, all linked down below in the description as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.